Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. There's a lot of confusion about why women are pay less than men and whether or not the gender pay gap is a myth. So let's talk about the economics of inequality. If you watched this year's Super Bowl, you probably saw the passionate car commercial about gender equality. It showed a girl in a soapbox race. First, do you really think Audi's mission is to end gender inequality? I don't mean to be cynical, but they didn't spend $5 million just to make a public service announcement. They must have expected the ad to generate revenue since it made them look good and socially conscious. Now, whether they are or not, I don't know. Now, I don't have a problem when companies do this. In fact, Budweiser, a company known for empowering women, also did this before. Bud Light Party here to discuss equal pay. Women don't get paid as much as men and that is wrong. The problem that I have with this is that the general public might get the wrong idea about what economists think about gender inequality, specifically the gender pay gap. It's 100% true that men are paid more than women. In fact, the average woman makes about 80 cents for every dollar that a man earns. And I've got three daughters too, can you believe this? This is American, 2017, I, I don't know. There's something special about economists. They don't really work in the realm of feelings and emotions. When confronted with infuriating data like this, economists usually don't freak out. Hmm. That's odd, I wonder why. It turns out that that statistic, that women are paid 20% less than men, although true, is extremely misleading. Now, before I move forward, I included the links to the studies, articles, and the data that I'm using in the description below. So everything I'm talking about is supported by research, not my patriarchal anti-woman opinion. I should also mention that I personally have seen a lot of empirical evidence that women are in many ways better than men. My female students work harder and they're less likely to act up in class, and my wife is way more loving, kind, and consistent than I am. Here we go, the data shows there's four broad reasons why women are paid less than men. Number one, women disproportionately choose college majors that lead to lower paid careers. Women are significantly more likely to attend and graduate from college, but many choose majors in the social sciences and the liberal arts. The result is that women disproportionately get jobs in lower paid professions like elementary education and nursing. Economists generally don't freak out about this since women voluntarily choose their college major. Universities don't have explicit barriers preventing women from majoring in higher earning majors like in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Actually, in many cases, these programs actively recruit women. Now that said, other social scientists quickly point out that there are likely implicit barriers and gender stereotypes that prevent women from choosing these higher paid majors. But for whatever reason, women aren't entering industries like the tech field. What is Oculus's approach to their clear gender gap and how you're gonna not port that into VR? So I will address this carefully. In the selection process, there were very few women that applied. It was not that we selected for males, and in fact, women may have actually come out ahead in the selection process. There's two ways to look at the interaction between that woman and that tech executive. First, the male chauvinistic version. In the selection process, there were very few women that applied. And here's the pro-gender equality feminist version. What is Oculus's approach to their clear gender gap? They both have great points. I mean, women are not well represented in the tech industry, but they should be. Not just because it'll decrease the gender pay gap, but because having women on your team results in better products and more profit. Women often bring a whole different perspective and that's extremely valuable to companies. So the point here is if you're a female student in high school or college, get into a STEM program. You can earn a whole lot of money. Reason number two, women disproportionately have other responsibilities, including taking care of family. It's not surprising to learn that women earn less income in the short term if they temporarily put their career on hold to have children. But raising a family also has significant long-term effects. For better or worse, women tend to have more family responsibilities, so they're more likely to work part-time and therefore earn less income. And women that work full-time voluntarily work less hours than men and are less likely to work on weekends and holidays. Again, this all means lower incomes. For most economists, this is the main cause of the gender pay gap. I mean, unpaid family responsibilities consume a lot of time and they limit some women's ability to make higher wages and get promotions. Think of a female lawyer that wants to make partner. If she has kids, she might not be able or not want to put in those rigorous hours that a male lawyer could potentially put in. And the data supports this since the wage gap doesn't become significant until women hit their 30s. Again, it's important to step back and realize that these are voluntary decisions made by individuals. No one's forcing women to have children and become the primary caretaker. Economists assume that women account for these long-term career and financial losses when they're deciding whether or not to have a family. Now, if this is true, then the majority of the gender pay gap and the fact that there are fewer female CEOs reflects women's preferences and priorities 
not blatant discrimination. But if our goal still remains to make sure women and men are paid the same, labor economists do have some suggestions. First, companies could be encouraged to offer jobs with more flexible hours. Studies show that careers that involve independent work that can be done with a flexible time frame have less gender pay inequality. Another solution would be to change our traditional gender roles and make it so that women are not primary caretakers. The data suggests that it doesn't really matter who works those long and flexible hours to get a promotion and who decides to have a flexible schedule to raise children. As it is right now, society perpetuates gender roles that tie women to child rearing, but it's not set in stone. We can change it if we want to. Reason number three, several studies reveal that women are less likely to negotiate higher wages or ask for raises. Researchers are still trying to understand why, but dozens of studies and experiments show that this behavior does add to the pay gap. Some economists have suggested a rather simple solution, transparency. In the US, it's often considered rude to ask coworkers how much money they make, but it would be a lot harder for firms to get away with paying some workers more and some workers less for the same job if they had to report their wages. And the fourth reason for the gender pay gap? Good old fashioned discrimination. In one study, researchers sent out two sets of identical resumes that only had one small difference. Half had the name John and the other half had the name Jennifer. And Jennifer was offered a 13% lower wage. What, are you kidding me? That's just, wait, no, hold on. I'm an economist, that's weird, I wonder why. In the US, there's really not a formal or institutional bias against women, but there's clearly an unspoken or even unconscious bias that keeps women from getting certain jobs and earning higher incomes. Now, it's hard to know exactly how much discrimination adds to the gender pay gap since horrible people don't report their horrible intentions, but many economists think it accounts for less than 4%. In other words, after all the other variables that I've mentioned are taken into account, like college majors, working hours, family responsibilities, and the lack of negotiation, women earn on average more than 96% of what men earn. So wage discrimination is a problem and we do have work to do, but the real earnings by women are way better than the 80% statistic that pundits and politicians report. When economists look at inequality, they keep in mind that unequal doesn't always mean unfair. For example, men make up 93% of occupational deaths and are 11 times more likely to get killed on the job. It's clearly unequal, but is it unfair that dangerous occupations like fishing and logging are dominated by men? Actually, think of my profession, teaching. In the US, 76% of all teachers are female. So are male applicants being unfairly discriminated against? Probably not. The inequality comes down to individual preferences. And in the end, economists value those more than some arbitrary goal to make everyone equal. What do I tell my daughter? I know exactly what I'm gonna tell my three daughters. If you wanna be a scientist, a teacher, or a homemaker, it's completely up to you. But whatever you choose, work hard and never accept the notion that your gender is a liability. Thanks for watching. Till next time.